HomeSat was the precursor to the videos we have yeah. now. Yeah, and we used it um, and and loved it. My kids, uh, they did algebra with it, um, geometry, because that was hard for me to be able to teach. And some of what we just did just because we liked it. You know, the literature, I loved the, the, the woman who talked about the literature. So we used it and we loved it. It was great. It was fabulous. When my family started our homeschooling journey, there were so many decisions to make. But one of our best decisions was choosing to use BJU Press Homeschool. I've never seen my kids so excited to get textbooks before. I'm amazed by how interesting and interactive the lessons are. My kids actually look forward to them. We use the online video lessons for all our courses, but I know some families choose to teach from the textbooks. What I love is that I can trust BJU Press to uphold our values. The Bible and biblical principles are woven throughout each subject. I'll admit, I was a bit nervous when I started homeschooling, but I have found a wonderful online community of other BJU Press homeschool families and consultants. The Homeschool Hub also makes my job easier. I can set up our schedules and rearrange them with just a few clicks. On the dashboard, I can see each of my kids' progress, and the assignments page shows me quickly what's ready for me to check or grade. I'm glad my son's biology assignments are automatically graded. BJU Press Homeschool has given us the tools and confidence to homeschool our children. For more information, do what I did and visit the BJU Press Homeschool website or talk with your local HomeWorks consultant. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Zan Tyler podcast, where our goal is to help you thrive on your homeschooling journey. Let me take just a minute to please ask you to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. And if this podcast has been encouraging or helpful to you, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Each review really does help us. We're available now on YouTube, and be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, where we will have even more content and great reels. Today, I have my dear friend, Faye Burgess Abbas, with me. She is one of the greatest inspirations I have ever had in my life, and I know that she will inspire you too. Faye has been blind since birth. She has an incredible testimony. She graduated from Furman University. We were students together. She was the only person in the class to get a standing ovation. She got her master's in church music from Southern Seminary. And after a year or so upon graduation, she started doing concerts and crusades, singing in crusades all across the country. During this time, she met her husband, Richard. They had two sons, Kendall and Daniel, and settled in California. So imagine my surprise when I had an answering machine on my voicemail, a message on my answering machine one day that said, hey, Zan, this is Faye. I want to homeschool my boys. Can you help me? So we're going to hear her story, how she homeschooled against all odds, and I know it will encourage you. So welcome, Faye. Thank you so much for being here. Glad to be here. Thank you, Zan. Well, so Faye, we met, I think, the first week when we were in college. Yes. But, but I want to take you back to the first time you called me about homeschooling. I had <laughs> been... I had been at the legislature. It had been a horrible, terrible, monstrous day there. And I came in and I was about to give up. And I had this message from you on my answering machine. And it was, Zan, I want to homeschool and I need help. And it was that call that day from you that really kept me going and got me out of my funk. So, so tell me about your decision to homeschool. Well, um, I have two sons. In fact, I was just on the phone with one of them and the babies. Um, I, um, two sons, and when they were very young, uh, some people that I knew uh, in the communities were talking to me, talking to me about homeschooling, and I said, "You're in California, right? California, okay, California, okay." And I, uh, some people, I, I met some people who were talking to me about homeschooling. And I'm, I thought, I don't think so. So I, I hugged 
then. And I said, so we're not going to. And this, 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 this woman brought me some material. Of course, it was bread. So thank you. Bert. <laughs> That's okay. What, okay. What, we need to stop just a minute. Now, the people who are watching this probably get this. But if you're listening, you don't. Faye, you got to tell us about the days surrounding your birth. Oh, well, <laughs> I was a pre I was a preemie. I'm a twin. Can you imagine two of me? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Now, she's quite different from me. Uh, but we were preemies. My mother did not even know she was having twins. They told her the baby was small. We were almost three months premature. Wow. And, and this is in rural Bamberg County in South rural Carolina. Bamberg County. And in the uh, 50s, yes. Yeah, in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, she went into labor and and uh, they, they, they didn't even know that she was having twins. But they said the baby is too small. She got really two really small babies. And um, they put us in an incubator, of course, because we couldn't breathe. And we spent a month in the incubator. That's what what they did. Uh, And uh, unbeknownst to everybody, my eyes were damaged in the incubator. Probably too intense. I I was in the wrong place in the incubator, clearly. And there was probably too much to the oxygen was probably too intense. It was a very common thing that actually happened, although they really didn't know much about it. It was happening. My best friend, the school for the blind actually was blinded by the same thing. She was also a twin. Um, But her her brother passed away. He didn't make it. They told my mother, they said, if they make it 72 hours, we'll give them, you know, maybe a. 40% 40% chance. Well, we were scrappy and we made it. But they didn't know, of course, that I couldn't see. And um, so, but my mother noticed it as moms will do that. She began to notice some differences and she um, said to the doctor, she doesn't, as I got older, she said, she doesn't look at me and she doesn't focus. And he's, and the doctor said, oh, she's just slow. <laughs> <laughs> She's not, oh, she's very aware of everything. She knows when I come in the room. She knows it's me. She turns her head, but her eyes don't focus. So they took me to a bunch of eye doctors, and finally uh, they determined that, yeah, the the oxygen, the intensity of the oxygen in the incubator had damaged my eyes. So I had a little bit of light perception. That was all. So, um, but... You know, I have to give my mom credit. She really didn't know what she was doing. She had two little boys who were like uh, four and seven. And then the two of us, my sister and I. And she really didn't know. But 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 one of the ophthalmologists said, just take her home. Treat her like the rest of your kids. And help her do what she needs to do. But just don't treat her differently. So she didn't. And um, so, I, you know, I... I learned to walk late because, of course, I couldn't watch people walking. Right. That's right. <laughs> but I can certainly talk. <laughs> it's so one of your fun. many gifts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so I, when I was six years old, I went away to the School for the Blind in South Carolina because that's mostly what they did. Right. Right. Most, very, very few uh, blind children would be in the public school system. So one or two every now here and there, but most that's what I did. So I lived away from home up until the end of my, uh, uh, what, so, uh, freshman, sophomore, well, the middle of my sophomore year, actually. In high school. And in high school. And then I transferred into the system in Orangeburg where I, where my family lived. You were one of the first um blind people to be uh, to to mainstream in the yeah high school, weren't you in that that district yeah definitely i was definitely one of the first i don't i don't think i was the first but i certainly was one of them um and uh, you know they uh, i was very very fortunate because the south carolina commission for the blind really really helped me with um i had gotten to know some of the people there that's a different agency from the school and I'd gotten to know a counselor, and I finally, 
actually my first semester of my sophomore year, I lived at the School for the Blind, but I went to the public school in that town. Okay. But I, it was like living in two worlds. You know, you just, mm -hmm. here, I'm going home. And so I did and did my last two and a half years um, at, at, at home, living at home and going to the public school there. Now, you weren't singing or playing the piano then yet, were you? Oh, yeah. Were you playing I, then? Okay. Oh, I started playing. I don't remember when I didn't play. Okay. My mother, when I was probably about uh, one and a half or so, or two, I had a little toy piano and I was walking around the house and all of a sudden she realized, she recognized what I was playing. I don't remember that. Um, but that's my amazing. first memory, clear memory, is of playing a piano at a church, not for anybody, but it was a Christmas time because I was playing Jingle Bells. I remember that. And somebody was holding me because, you know, I was little and I couldn't reach the keys. I don't know who was holding me. I have no idea. I just know it was at night and it was a very echoey room and I was playing. <laughs> Whatever. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, you know, so I, you know, and my grandmother had a piano, so I would go to her house and play on her piano. So uh, that is amazing. So you were one, uh, you were the first person in your family to go to college, right? Yeah, I guess I was. Come and, to think of and so we met at Furman University. <laughs> and tell us a little bit what it was like to be a blind student before ADA, the Americans for Disabilities Act? Well, um, I mean, it, 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 you just, I was very fortunate because especially when I transferred to um, the school, the high school in Orangeburg, the South Carolina Commission for the Blind really did help. But they, you know, I, I remember the librarian there talking to me about how I would need to get the names of my books and all of that kind of stuff. They did help some, but I had to learn to get the names of books, especially when I was in college, and and try to find them. There were uh, there was there were a couple of agencies. The American Printing House of the Blind was in in Louisville was helpful in trying to help us locate things either in Braille or um, in recording form. Because that what that's kind of what you had to do, but you pretty much kind of on your own. There wasn't a whole lot of support, and certainly no ADA to say, "Oh, right." And and I just remember people would volunteer, students would volunteer, and go to your room and read yeah. books and record them for you. My mother read things she didn't even know what she was reading when she was in high school. I mean, she really had no idea. She just okay, I'll just I'll just read the words. It doesn't make any sense, but I'll read it. <laughs> I found those recordings a few years ago. It was bizarre. Um, but yes, people would come and volunteer um, and um, and help, you know, read read books. And some things I was able to get in Braille. I got music theory books in Braille. Um, and you were on, were you on a music scholarship? Um, not really, no. No. Um, the, the the South Carolina Commission for the Blind helped, um, you know, fund some of it. But I really, no, I really wasn't on a music scholarship. I, I and, and, and scholarships weren't that big a deal then. Yeah. That way, you know, no. tuition was not off the charts like it is now. But you were a piano and voice major, right? I actually was not. I was a church music major. Okay, church music. Okay. Yeah. Church music. Church music. I will there were, what was it? There were grants. There was a grant that a lot of us got. It had nothing to do with being blind or sighted. Um, it, because when I started talking to my, my mom about wanting to go to Furman, um, and she was like, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do that. But there was a grant that was offered to, and a lot of my friends at Furman actually had it. And it was like, I think like fifteen hundred dollars, which was a lot. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, but uh, so I I got that, and then the financial aid office at Furman was incredibly helpful, incredibly helpful. So you, you know, one of the things I remember 
Um, so we got to be really close friends. And yes. you know my husband, Joe. So <laughs> Joe and Faye were best buds. And Joe would always sneak up on you and try to scare you in the hall. Yes, yes he did. <laughs> but, but then you always could hear his footsteps. You knew I it was him coming. I knew it was Joe. Your, your hearing was amazing. So, but one of my most precious memories, Faye, is the day we all graduated. And we had a graduate, I think there were like 2,500 students at Furman or well, something. Were a bunch of Maybe, yeah. And, and when you graduated, you were the only student in the class that got a standing ovation. Oh, and, she's finished. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget that as long as I live because Furman was a hard, demanding school. Well, and I, you, you know, you did, and that music major there was unbelievably tough. It was killer. I'm getting and, and And you did it. I remember you telling me you would learn one hand with the Braille yep. and other hand with Braille, and then you would put it together. And I, that's how I learned piano music because there is Braille music. And I had, I did piano my first my first year, they said, we'll start with what you know. I really love to sing, and I really just play the piano so I can sing. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I had been playing for years, and, and I had done piano at the School for the Blind, and I'd learned to read Braille music. But as you said, it's hard because you, you know, you, you can't look at it, which means you read a couple of measures with, for one hand. And you play that, and you re you memorize it. Then you memorize the left hand, and then you put it together. So it was very, very tedious. You know, sight reading was not something I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sight right reading was not for you. Okay. Um. So so then after Furman, you yes. got through with your education yet? What did you do? No, I I wasn't. After Furman, I took actually I took a semester off. Um, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted. I, I, wa I knew I wanted to go on. I actually wanted to go to seminary, and I knew that because I wanted to be in some sort of Christian vocation. I, I knew that. And um, so I took a semester off and spent a, uh, 16 weeks with the South Carolina Commission for, for the Blind. They had a program that would ba teach you basic living skills as a blind person. Um, okay, so tell us what you learned about how to know when cookies are done. This always fascinated me. Oh, I don't remember what I told you. Oh, um, yeah, well, they, they emit a certain sound, like a certain hissing sound. Well, this little puppy thing. <laughs> uh, you don't, if you're not paying attention, you wouldn't know. But they do, they, they, of course, you can, you can kind of tell by the smell, too. But they do make this little, I, I was surprised by it. I didn't even know that. I, and they make this, sometimes I mean, this little puppy sound, and you know they're done. So that's so, that's so amazing that you, you also had a piece of art hanging in or or featured in the what was it the New York Metropolitan Art Museum there uh, well it, at it at in this semester at the Commission for the Blind they had us doing all kinds of different things because they wanted to make sure you could read Braille I could read Braille better than the Braille teacher um and and typing, they wanted to make sure we could type, and I could type as well as the typing teacher. Actually, I could probably type better. Um, and we did other things. They 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 taught us uh, mobility and orientation, like be using a cane. At the school for the blind, when we were little, we never used canes. We never did, and we ran everywhere. My best friend and I, who were both blind, we just ran everywhere. We knew where steps were. We just run down the stairs, run up them. I wouldn't probably wouldn't do that now. Oh. <laughs> So, all right, so you ended up at seminary. Yes, I did. I ended up in, in, in Louisville at the, the Southern Seminary there as, as a church major, a uh, church music major. Um, I, I, it wasn't exactly what I, I knew really what I wanted to do was I really wanted to sing. I'd been doing concerts since I was probably 14 in churches and, and, and all over South Carolina and um and sometimes in georgia and north carolina and i loved to sing and i loved to play the piano but i there was not nothing there at the seminary in that mm -hmm. realm and i mean there was a performance major but i didn't think i was that good so i i did uh church music and but i but i was 
really interested in, in performing because that's what I did. Um, so, so after you graduated from Southern Seminary in Louisville, you I know you took a job for a while, but then you ended up working with some people in Nashville and you did get to tour. And I did. I did. I, the first I, I took a job working in a, a small church uh, as the director of youth music and activities. And it was OK, but I, it was not me. It was not what I really wanted. And I was able I was invited to go to a college student conference with the Southern Baptist uh, uh, denomination in New Mexico because I was still singing. I was still doing concerts in there when I could. And I got invited to go to this conference as one of this, the singers, one of the soloists. And at that point, I just said, you know, this is what I need to do. And some people said, you know, if you want to move to Nashville, we'll, we'll help you. And so I left my job in Ohio and I moved to Nashville and started touring and did that for like five, five years or so. And just went all up. Loved it. Loved it. It was yeah, Can you say at crusades and churches and did concerts and all kinds of conferences, student conferences, singles, all kinds of, all just Lots, lots, and so lot. So, on a cruise, a Christian cruise, <laughs> where you were the musician, you were the entertainment. You I never entered. I did. I, I, it was a, it was a singles, uh, Christian singles cruise, and um, I met him the the first day that we got there because there was a mix up with roommates and the the um the woman who was my roommate, whom I didn't know, apparently there had been a mix-up, and Richard was given her name as his roommate. <laughs> but he came looking to find her, and because he wanted to meet her, and I was her roommate. So, there we go. So, so, so y'all met, got did. married, got married, lived in I California. Tried. I tried to talk him into moving to Nashville, but he wouldn't. So I moved to California. And then you had your two boys. My two boys. I want to be with Richard, not Richard, Kendall and Daniel. Kendall and Daniel. Okay. Yeah. So now we're back to where we started from. Well, we had to get that detour to lay the stage for everybody. You know? you know what kind of life, what kind of amazing life you live and all the obstacles you overcome. So people... You're a blind mom, and people start talking to you about homeschooling. Yes, they did. And I said to Richard, because I'm thinking, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't see how I can do that. And I said to Richard, we're not going to homeschool, are we? He said, oh, no. I said, okay, fine. Um, but obviously, um, God had other plans. <laughs> and I, I couldn't get away from it. I just couldn't get away from it. And there were people who were still talking to me about it. And, and one one uh, woman in particular, I said, we, well, we could help you. We could help you. And they were suggesting all these these uh, curriculum material that, that I couldn't possibly use um, because it was so incredibly visual. And I was like, what am I going to do? I don't know. And, of course, I'd kept up with you. We, you know, and, and I knew what Zan was doing. So I, one day I, got, I thought, okay, I don't know how to do this. I just don't know how to do this. So I called, so that was the thing I called this in. Yeah, that was the thing. I was so discouraged. And I thought, Lord, if you really need me to do this, I can keep doing this. Oh, my God. It was, a, it was a good day for both of us. It was a good day. It was a good day. I was terrified, but I knew it was the thing I had to do. I knew I had to do it. I just, couldn't figure out how to do it. So, so Faye, tell us how you figured out how to do it. Because you told me last night on the phone and many times since we've talked that it would be so much easier today with the technology oh my than goodness. the technology you had then. Well, I don't know. It, I, it, somebody suggested a book. I think it was a Kathy Duffy book that I started looking at and it talked about different curriculum material and mm -hmm. stuff. And I came across the most wonderful program, and I'm just going to tout it because it, it saved us, called Sing, Spell, Read, and Write. Now, 
it got my attention because the first thing was sing. <laughs> right. That's and right. Singing with my children since before they were born. Literally. I mean, really. I sang. I played music to them. And they, re- they Kendall especially, recognized the piece that I was playing to him before he was born. And when he would get anxious, I'd play that piece and he'd just, oh, I know this song. So anyway, sing, spell, read, and write. So I thought, I can do this. And nobody else in our group was doing it, but I did. And, you know, so we sang our way through the alphabet and and, uh, and with all kinds of crazy songs and all kinds of crazy actions and, and that kind of stuff. And, and uh, Richard helped with, with teaching him how to form the letters and that kind of stuff. So we, you know, we just... It, it was incredible. It was incredible. You just and did it. I just, you know, from there, I thought, okay, uh, we can figure this out. And I did have a machine called an Opticon. Um, I remember it, your first Opticon. I still have one. And I still use it occasionally. An Opticon, basically, you it has a little tiny camera that you slide across the print page. It converts the images into tactile images that you can feel. So... If you're looking at an A, you feel the shape of an A. It doesn't convert it to Braille. It's just print. Which so I had to learn how to read a print. print. Ah, there's some ways, yeah. My goodness. I'm... <laughs> but I did, and, and I still have that machine. I, I And for some things, I still use it. I don't need it nearly as much as I used to. But, uh, you know, I, when the kids would uh, write their papers and... and they would they would um, type them, but I do remember Daniel would because they knew I could read print. Daniel would write funny notes on his papers at the bottom. He'd print them because he knew I would be looking at it with my opticon and I would see them. <laughs> One of the funniest things he wrote it was a Shakespeare paper, and at the and on the bottom of the page he wrote, "Frailty, thy name is woman." <laughs> <laughs> I just burst out laughing. He said, oh, you found my note. Come on. <laughs> he's, he's a he's hey, That is so amazing. So I know. Yeah. So the sponsor for this podcast is BJU Press. And I used it. What? I know you it's, did. We used HomeSat. Okay. HomeSat was the precursor to the videos we have yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. And we used it. Um, and and loved it. My kids, uh, they did algebra with it, um, geometry, because that was hard for me to be able to teach. And some of what we just did just because we liked it. You know, the literature, I loved the, the, the woman who talked about the literature. So we used it and we loved it. It was great. It was fabulous. So what I want to talk about your greatest challenge in being a so, so what is the right word? Is it blind? Is it visually impaired? I mean, you are more than visually impaired. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you are uh, totally unsighted. So is visually impaired. It's blind. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but although a lot of us call each other blind people, a lot of us call each other blinks. My children. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'll let I'll let you own that name. I'm not going to own that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So. So now you so what was your biggest challenge? The, I, the biggest challenge I think and not really not with with homeschooling because once I got into it I just said we just got to figure it out. I had my opticon so I could look at their papers if they wrote it and they would print um and uh you know they I, I could use my opticon to read their papers if I needed to. Um, so, gosh, the biggest challenge was just uh, the the field trips, of course. I couldn't drive. Um, they didn't like for me to drive. Uh, <laughs> we really good homeschool group, and we did a lot of things together. I was president of the group at least a couple years and in co-presidents with my my dear friend, Janae, who, um, it, it, her son was a couple of years younger than my youngest. And so, it, uh, you know, I just, the, I guess once I started, I just thought, well, 
this is the right thing. And so we'll just figure it out. Once they got older, um, you know, I enrolled them in some college courses because I, I, I knew that I couldn't, couldn't do those things. And, um, we used home sat, we used other curriculum that they could work through. Um, but I, you know, with my optica, I was checking things and, and asking questions and just getting them to places, getting them to violin lessons or percussion lessons or, um, you know, whatever other, because I, I didn't want them just to be home all the time. There were things I wanted them to be able to do. Uh, I got into fencing and um, just did it, did it community things. So I traded, I taught, I, I, I was teaching uh, lessons also during all of them. While you were homeschooling, you were teaching private piano and voice lessons? Yes. Yes. And so a lot of times I would trade with people. I, I'll, I'll give your child lessons if you will provide transportation for this. So, you know, it was a win-win for everybody. I mean, I didn't make money, but I got my kids where I wanted them to go. And that was, that mattered more to me. And yeah. then when the boys were older and you wanted them to be part of the, the Sacramento Youth Symphony, yeah. you yes. volunteered there so they yeah. could go? We did. We did. We Richard and I worked. Um, you know, cause, and they wanted parents to volunteer anyway. And I, we said, you know, we don't, we don't have the money, Richard, you know, was having issues with some jobs and that kind of stuff. So we just didn't have the money. And I said, but we'll work, I'll work, I'll, I'll do. And so we volunteered and did all kinds of things. We planned a couple of trips to Disneyland with the group cause they sang at Disneyland and, and, um, so yeah, you know, I just, I just did what I needed to do because I didn't want anybody to feel like my boys missed out because it would be. So I, and that was my goal. I wanted them to have all the advantages that they could have. The fact that I couldn't see was just mostly a nuisance. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this was encouraging and inspiring for you. If you would like more information, you can find me at zantyler.com. Until next time, see you later.